Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Advanced Topics. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at aliasing in C++, and we're going to be doing it by looking at a function in one of our favorite tools, Compiler Explorer. So we'll go ahead and start by writing this function, and it will return an integer, we'll call it getval, and then we'll go ahead and pass in two integers by reference, so one integer a and another b. Now in the function body here, let's set a equal to a value like 4, we'll set b equal to the same value, and then we'll return the sum of those two integers. And I've got O2 optimizations turned on here. If you turn them off, you end up getting um, you know, some filler code that we don't want to see. Uh, so O2 kind of gets rid of all of that and gives us some very simple intuitive code. Um, so over here, uh, we see that we're loading 4 into A. We've pre-computed the result, so 4 plus 4 is 8. Uh, you can see that it's a result, so if we go ahead and change both of these to 5, we get uh, 10 being moved in here, so the result of 5 plus 5. And so EAX is for returning. And then you see at the very end, we go ahead and load 5 uh, into B, which is pointed uh, at an RSI, or that pointer stored in RSI. And then we go ahead and return. Okay, so rather intuitive code, but let's see what happens if we change this ever so slightly. So instead of A and B being the same value, what if we change it uh, to say, you know, one of them is five, the other one's four? Well, you know, maybe intuitively I would think, okay, well, one of these is going to load four now, um, and then my pre-computed result is going to turn into nine, right? That might be intuitive for us. But what we get is actually something quite different, right? We, it seems like we have less optimized code here. So now we're storing five and four, but now we're reloading A again. So A is an RDI, so we go ahead and load from the address here, um, store it into EAX for our return, and then we actually have to do our add here. So we add four to EAX, right? So that's our A plus B going on, um, four being the value that we're storing in B. So why do we get this unoptimized code here, or this less optimized code? So this goes back to this thing called aliasing. So what the compiler is having a hard time doing right here is figuring out if A and B are referring to the same piece of memory. So, you know, another way that we can look at this is by changing all of these to pointers instead. So if we change A and B to a pointer, another way that we can, uh, you know, kind of frame this idea of aliasing is that the compiler is having a hard time figuring out if A and B are pointing to the same piece of memory. So if they're pointing to the same piece of memory, right, when we update B right here, we're also updating A. So the result that I would get out of that if I passed you know, the same pointer for A and B, I should get eight, right? Because I go ahead and change the value stored at that integer to five, and then I change the value stored at that integer that both A and B point to to four, and then this last A plus B is really just going to be four plus four. If they point to different locations, then A would be set to five here, the integer pointed to by B would be set to four here, and my result would be nine. So the compiler has to be conservative here because it doesn't know which way you know, we've intended our code to be written. Uh, it doesn't know if A or B are going to alias each other or not. So it is conservative. It has to reload A here and then do this add. So it can't apply that optimization of just pre-computing uh, the value for us. Okay, so let's look at this uh, in a slightly different way. So let's go ahead and change everything back to references. Um, and let's go ahead and say change this integer to something like a floating point number. So when we change it to a floating point number, it looks like our optimization just comes back. So, you know, A and B are still different values. We're still doing this add down here. But now, you know, I've got my optimized code. So I'm storing five here. I've got a pre-computed result of nine. So I'm returning an integer. Um, and then you see I've got this hex loaded here, which is going to end up being uh, my hex representation of four uh, that I'm storing into B, uh, or hex representation for a floating point number, I should say. So why did I get the optimized code when I use an int and a float instead of just two integers? Well, there's this thing called type-based alias analysis. So the compiler has some rules in terms of uh, what things can alias each other. And so what the compiler sees here is that, okay, I know some rules about the integer. An integer shouldn't alias a float, and a float shouldn't likewise alias an integer. So the compiler can optimize code obeying those rules. It's assuming that these two things won't uh, alias each other because the types shouldn't alias each other. In fact, if we do that aliasing, right, that's actually undefined behavior. So it's able to optimize this code, um, assuming that the two things aren't aliases. Uh, we, but we can actually get rid of this, right? So we can get rid of, uh, we can turn this off with this dash F, no strict aliasing, 
and we get some rather ugly code that gets spit out on the other side because we're kind of tying the hands of the compiler, making it a lot more conservative. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of that dash F no strict aliasing. We get our optimized code back and let's change this back to say an integer. Now, one thing that you might have wondered here is uh, why did we get the optimized code when these things were the same value, right? So when, say, they were both equal to four, it seems like we got the, the right answer, the optimized code. Well, this is because, you know, the result was rather trivial for the compiler to generate. If A is set equal to four and B is set equal to four, it doesn't matter if they alias each other or not. You know, we're still going to be doing four plus four whether or not you know a and b alias each other so we can go ahead and pre-compute the result as eight and it just serves four into a and b so why do we care about this aliasing well we just showed that it can disable um, some optimizations and it can even do more damage in terms of preventing the compiler from say vectorizing our code for us or making it a lot more difficult for the compiler to say vectorize our code but we do have a little bit of control over this so um, in a language like C and C99, there's the restrict keyword. And what the restrict keyword allows us to do is to basically tell the compiler about things aliasing each other and basically tell the compiler these things aren't going to be aliases. Um, and in a language like Fortran, you know, we kind of get that by default. So if we pass, say, two references uh, to a function, those are guaranteed, you know, just in the language to not be references of each other. Uh, but C++, we don't have the restrict keyword. And in, uh, we also don't have that you know, implicit assumption, or we can't make that assumption, um, as we've already seen, uh, like we can in Fortran. But what we can do in a language uh, or with a compiler like GCC is we still can use restrict, just not as the keyword. We can go ahead and add this, uh, this modifier restrict here inside of GCC for restrict. So let's go ahead and pass in um, restrict here for both A and B. And you see if we change the values now to say, you know, be different, say four and five, you know, five and 10, right? We get the optimized code no matter what, because we're basically giving a hint to our compiler saying, hey, A and B are not going to alias each other. Okay, so that was a brief introduction to aliasing and, you know, why you should really care about it and how it can kind of limit our the compiler's ability to optimize our code. Um, as always, check out any of my code samples at github.com slash coffee before arch. And if you have uh, any questions, always feel free to uh, go ahead and give me a shout. But as always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.